Are you sure you want to do this? I give you 15 minutes. I used to work for a rainforest named company several years ago that primarily focused on shipping and delivering packages and orders from their customers online. Specifically, I worked at one of the distribution warehouses that was the last stop for packages that were to be loaded into those blue vans that bring your new stuff to your front door. Big trucks would unload packages throughout the night to be sorted and prepped by the workers. And then the full bags of packages would be loaded onto vans in the morning to be delivered by the drivers to houses. This system repeated every day with only two, sometimes three, shifts of workers. And as luck would have it, I was happily placed on night shift. The work was simple, if not exhausting, and being at night meant we didn't have to worry about the heat as much as day shift. I won't go to deep into detail about how every job worked, but I'll try to give enough detail to help give you a good idea of what happened. After the usual new hire period where I was just trying to find my groove and get used to the hustle and bustle of the warehouse, I found myself assigned to one of the nightly jobs that was unanimously described as the most difficult job there, and honestly, I completely agree with that. The packages would be unloaded from the trucks onto the conveyor belt and need to be pushed to one side of it or the other depending on which side of the building they would need to be going to. The packages would have a sticker with a letter as followed by other indicators for where it would go later. The letter determining which aisle it was supposed to be in, and in turn, which half of the building it would need to be on based on where that aisle was compared to the belt. With me so far? Good. Because if standing beside the belt pushing and pulling boxes and paper packages for several hours, based on a letter sounds like an easy job. Congrats. You would be placed across from me to get your brain melted by the pace we had to work at. Imagine, if you will, a rhythm-based video game set to a high difficulty, and then replace the buttons or notes with packages of different sizes. That would be a fairly close representation of what you would be staring at for not a few minutes, but several hours. Things would get so overwhelming that some workers would give up halfway through the night after getting too dizzy from having the rollers of the belt spinning in their vision for too long. The nights were even harder when the holidays came around and the belt would be absolutely packed, with boxes falling off the side on the regular. But then you would look up across the belt, weary from the never-ending monsoon of labels and letters, and see me listening to my nearby music and moving packages around like I had two extra arms and was some kind of splitting god. I will admit, it did take a while to get used to the flow when I first started. And it did put a bit of strain on the eyes. But I would honestly just shut my brain off and let my eyes become unfocused as I just autopiloted the job like a madman. No one ever did better than me at this job during my time there. That's not my words. That was everyone who ever tried to replace me from that spot. Like when our unwitting antagonist of this story finally enters. A manager from day shift that we'll call Sam. Occasionally managers would switch around from the different shifts to make sure they all knew how. The place functioned properly. Cool. No problem. I got in for my shift on the night Sam was to manage our shift for once. I gave the usual hellos and ironic good mornings to everyone preparing for the night shift and went up to the job board. Everyone got assigned with a little name badge next to the job they would do that night as they came in. And since I was usually one of the first ones there, I would just say hi to the night manager as I moved my own name to the splitter position as we both knew that it was my spot. This night however, I went through those same motions, said hi to Sam, placed my tag on, splitter, and went to go prepare the split zone for my day. A few minutes later, I get called over to the job board. Sam, so hey, I wanted to let you know that I moved you to section A for the night. 
Go ahead and get a scanner set up and head on over. Me. Confused. Dot but what about the splitting? Quote. Sam. Don't worry. We'll have it covered. We just need you over in A. I had already set up my place at the split zone so I could handle it at my best. And he was already moving some stuff away so he could do whatever he was doing for the night. It was basically just a couple of package racks for damaged stuff I pull off the belt. As well as a place for my small speaker. I was a bit confused as the package count was higher than average that night and a good splitter. Really takes a load off of a lot of other jobs down the line. Me. Serious face. Are you sure you want to do this? Quote. Sam. Confused. Do what? Quote. Me. Are you sure you don't want me up here? It's supposed to get pretty busy tonight. Sam. Waving me off. We'll be fine. If it gets too busy. One of us managers can jump in to help. When he said that. I actually chortled aloud briefly and shook my head. I had seen the managers split before and none of them would last the whole night if they had to do it. Very few could and I was unrivaled at the job so I knew what was about to happen. The first trucks had already pulled in and they looked pretty beefy to start with. I did some rough estimation. Me. Alright, I'll give you 15 minutes. Sam. Huh? 15 minutes? Quote. Me. Yep. Gotta go get a scanner now. Not much time before that belt starts and I have to get ready again. He had actually seemed confused as I walked off to get ready for my new job. I was a little bummed in all honesty. Splitting was my favorite job with how I could just shut off for a bit while doing it. Kind of like being in a trance or meditating. But the man said what the man said. Once the belt started I went along doing my job. Scanning and placing packages in bags. Not much to say other than it was slow and boring. But I kept an eye on my watch. Sure enough. Barely 10 minutes pass when one of the lane supervisors. Ambassador. Entered my lane. Ambassador. Hey. Op. Me. Smiling. They need me up front. Don't they? Quote. Ambassador. Also smiling. Yep. They just radioed it in. I'm here to take over until they get a replacement here. Me. Checking my watch. Five minutes ahead of schedule too. Must be pretty bad. Ambassador. They've already had to pull Jackpot back to the front twice. Me. Guess I'll go save the day. Jackpot was a term we used for any packages that reached the end of the belt without being sorted. They were put in a large container and wheeled back to the front to do the whole run of it again. I handed the scanner to her and quickly made my way to the split zone. It was absolute. Mayhem. I saw the poor replacement splitter and two managers. Including Sam. Trying to calm the monster that was this night's intake. Packages were falling from the belt. People were being buried to their knees. And Sam looked like his eyes were about to explode with how wide they had gotten. I took a deep breath and cracked my knuckles mid-stride as I moved to the front of the line. Me. I've got this. Get those packages picked up and put into a jackpot. Sam. I'm gonna need those racks back over here once it's cleared up. Other splitter. Back up a bit and double check my work. There was absolutely zero room for debate as everyone had no choice but to listen to what I said as. I began to split the belt like I was conducting three orchestras at once. That 10 minutes I was gone took me another 20 to get things running smoothly again. Needless to say, I was thanked for the rescue and told to stay there for the rest of the night. Much to my pleasure. Sam also proceeded to ensure that I was designated splitter every night I was there to avoid further problems. They also started to include me in conversations on how to train new splitters for the nights I was out and any advice to pass along from my own experiences. I guess it sometimes does pay to be so good at a job that no one can question you. Aside from a couple future stories I might tell some other time. There were still nights that they put me at other jobs. 
but it was usually slower nights. I would usually be called up if someone gave up or it got busy though, which I didn't mind too much. As long as we were clear that at the end of the night, that was my spot. Edit. Thank you so much for the gold I wasn't expecting anyone to enjoy my story but I'm glad you all are. Hope everyone is having a wonderful day. I remember feeling that good at one of my old warehouse jobs. Up until I collapsed one day just preparing for the long haul. A short visit to the hospital and a few weeks off later. I eventually get the news my heart's uneven. Slightly bigger on one side and the stress that makes me feel weak and eventually collapsed said. Day was the result. Tone it down or it'll keep happening. Tell the boss as much and go back to work as usual at a slower pace. Then managers slowly ramp it up more and more until I feel my limit again and I'm saying no. Eventually asking me why I'm saying no to the massive jobs I used to handle. I remind them that I collapsed from that workload. They give me deer in headlights and say, what are you talking about? Quote, I give it back and slowly retell the tale of them sending me off in a stretcher to the ambulance. They drop the subject and just approach me later with papers asking for proof. Next morning I'm giving them my two weeks. I heard the place fell into anarchy and jobs were lost I wanted nothing to do with it. Well written and clear to what happened. Thanks for the story. You worked for Patagonia? That's all I could come up with. It's magical when your brain just takes over without the need for conscious thought. Can't explain it. Can't teach it. And I bet if you tried to really focus on the work, you'd go slower. I had a kind of interesting experience with this when I was learning how to do Sudoku. After playing many games, there were times I would scan a column or row with one blank square left and without consciously evaluating each of the filled in squares. My brain would poke me with the missing number. It's good to be the top dog in a job, especially if they listen to your suggestions for improvement. Well done. I worked at a pizza place ages ago and whenever I was assigned to make pizza boxes from the flat packed stacks, it was so mindless and meditative. I really enjoyed it. Took zero brain power. Just let my hands do the work and I could contemplate the mysteries of the universe. I totally get the lose focus thing. I use that method when I'm going against the flow of a huge crowd of people. I look above all the faces and aim myself toward empty spaces. Worked smoothly. Never had any collisions. I did a short stint at the distro one up from you. Building the pallets for each region. I like doing the line. Playing Tetris with boxes on a pallet or in a box to get them ready for you guys. Had to stop because my legs couldn't take it. Just too much movement and on my feet for 10 hours a pop after too long retired. But, yeah, there is always some spot you can excel at and those workers always impressed me with how they handled the load. I was nights during the holidays. So we got plenty of hours and work. How did you like all those post New Year's orders of weights and exercise equipment? LMAO. Give Sam some credit as he did figure it out. What a great story. You're awesome. P. I like that Sam had the initiative to try to move people around. Probably thinking about cross training. And that he had the wit to quickly recognize that this had been a terrible mistake and the humility. To not stand on his manager credentials and instead defer back to the actual expert on scene. I suspect he wound up being a pretty good manager. It's great to be appreciated. I was a bartender at a service bar. No customer interaction. At a summer resort. I wasn't getting tipped out as much as I should. One summer. I asked to be a waiter instead. They brought in another bartender. He sucked. He was slow. His drinks sucked. He never had time to help when servers were in the weeds. I moved back. 
mostly because I enjoyed it more. Partly because of the begging. I got tipped out properly the rest of the season. One of the things I did was set a goal to never require the servers to write it down. This was before computer POS systems. They'd come back, ask, can I call? And I always answered yes. Took verbal drink orders a dozen drinks long and served them up fast got them sodas and coffees. When they were in the weeds. And really showed them why they tip out the bar. You're not kidding. Pushing gave me such motion sickness. I learned from working at Wendy's when I was 18. Aces in their places. Sounds like a poor logistical setup if they need what amounts to skilled labor to make it work. You could be an air traffic controller with those skills. You are a great writer and storyteller. Are you working on any literary projects at the moment? Well written and a very entertaining read. Great job on the splitting and writing. So Lucy and Ethel couldn't handle and you saved them. Too bad they couldn't eat all of those packages lol. No seriously nice story. I can really empathize here. My job is somewhat similar. I have to stack and organize wood that gets cut from a large saw. And it can be chaos sometimes. We get a list of where everything needs to go before we start an order. And every board gets printed on when it's cut. It seems simple. But keeping up with the machine is a nightmare if you don't have the brain power. I've seen another guy keep cutting when his stacker couldn't keep up. And it looked like he had an entire pallet of wood that needed to be sorted. And the job still wasn't done. I'm often told I'm the best out here, too. But the difference is that my supervisor trained me and knows better than to put me somewhere else. Unless absolutely necessary. If I do get put somewhere else. I'm running the machine, and the difference in workload is quite apparent. It's so boring when I'm not stacking, but it is easier on my body. If a task cannot function without a superstar worker at it, then it's properly a skilled trade and should be paid as such. Or they need to have realistic inputs and staff enough people to handle them. You made jack shit. Bezos got richer off your back. At least your new manager had the awareness required to listen to you. I'm ready to purchase the novel or biography about this story. I was like that at a few places. Both manning the posse at a Sunday less chicken restaurant. And as a laborer at a moving company. Get too good at a job. And instead of recognizing your proficiency. They just assume that's the status quo until your absence derails everything when they can't just replace you with just one person. At the restaurant, I had the POS memorized to the point that I'd have orders in the system before the customer even finished pronouncing them. Of four cashiers, I was handling half the customers myself. The direct manager was aware and appreciative, making sure I was scheduled on the busiest days. But replacing me was tasked to someone above him. At the moving company, I was one of the guys responsible for taking furniture from the house the truck. Or visa versa. Typically that was a two-man job for anything larger than a side table. But that was slow. And on a particularly packed day I just said screw it and threw a whole couch on my shoulder rather. Than wait for a partner. Can't do that inside the house of course. Pivot. But once it was known I could do that. Soloing the big stuff to the truck became my main job from there on. I've since left both places. And heard from friends in each that hiring managers had a bit of a wake-up call. Realizing I couldn't just be replaced with one employee. I know just the spot you are talking about. I tried it once. For maybe 20 minutes. I was happy to admit I was not cut out for it. Just say it. Amaze zero N. It's okay. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epicaracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. 
please like, share, and subscribe.